We've learned that Post's investigative reviews are extensive and their burden of proof is high. But the thought of receiving an intent to decertify notice from Post has got to be one of the most daunting scenarios an officer can imagine. It's a situation no one wants to think about much. Time to separate the fear from reality. One of the fears that came up earlier was who's reviewing the cases. So can you speak a little bit about who the commission is and maybe compare that to who the advisory board is? I can. So one of the things that I mentioned is sort of the internal review process that occurs within post. That's where the decision is made before the actual notice to the officer with respect to decertification. But from that point, the case, if the officer requests their, uh, their appeal, uh, then the case would move forward to the board. And the board is made up of nine members. Uh, some of them are public members. Some of them are previous law enforcement members. Part of the rationale behind creating the board was to give the public some input into police disciplinary hearings and disciplinary processes. And I think they serve an important role in that capacity. Uh, so the board has to find that there's uh, clear and convincing evidence to support a decertification. It then goes to our commission. And that is your post commission who has been dictating standards and training since 1959. This is a group that regularly meets. Uh, they're very well informed about the issues that are facing law enforcement, and they are who direct the bureaucratic side of post uh, in our mission moving forward. It then goes to an administrative law judge hearing, which is a, a full evidentiary adversarial hearing. This is when evidence gets presented. This is when both sides have an opportunity to be heard. From the administrative law judge hearing, it then goes back to the commission for a final determination. And only then, if decertification is upheld by the commission, would that officer be decertified. So the first step following an appeal is a review by the Peace Officer Standards Accountability Advisory Board, which votes to recommend whether the case moves forward to the post commission. I spoke with one of the advisory board members in our post executive group about the processes they underwent to prepare for these cases. So what kind of training have you received um, related to this uh, process and what your role is and your responsibility? So we had an eight hour plus training where we actually went through the law, we, we spoke with the attorneys, we had the whole um, commission there where they engaged us. We went through a mock hearing. It was a real live, um, we had attorneys acting as, you know, um, the officers, you know, it gave real insight in what our expectations are going to be. And so I, I think they did an excellent job in trying to get us prepared and geared up for our first cases. It was really kind of to put them in the position of having to be the adjudicator and not having the experience of reviewing all these cases beforehand. And we did not give them an easy case intentionally because we wanted to make sure they could, and they did, think through, have we met the threshold? And if we haven't, we can't come to this conclusion. So it's really important that they have that baseline understanding so they can make these fair, impartial decisions. We're not a proactive oversight board. We're not out there looking for cases. This is what's reported to POST, and then POST has an obligation to follow through and make sure that, that the agencies are doing the right thing and then that POST is following through with what they need to do to make sure that the certification is proper. The picture of how cases move through investigation and review is getting clearer. At this point, the officers had a few more questions about the practicalities of what happens after decertification. What does it look like when an officer is decertified? Like, what is the process after? And what type of information is the community going to get to see or know? So at the board hearing, at the commission hearing, um, that's when the case is actually presented before the board or the commission. So there's some information that would be, you know, disclosed at that point. And is there a time where this needs to be completed? Like, is it a year from that time or anything like that? Uh, we do have three years from the time the internal affairs investigation is complete and submitted to post. It's in nobody's best interest if it takes three years, and, and we understand that. It's not in the community's best interest. It's not in your officer's best interest. It's not in your agency's best interest. So if somebody does end up losing their certificate, is there a time frame like where you could reapply and get it again? If we're talking about a revocation of your certification, that's permanent. There is no mechanism by which you can get it back. What happens if you get decertified in California? Do we, do we notify anybody? The short answer is yes. Uh, there's a national database called the National Decertification Index. And we're required by law to make a notification to that database 
if we decertify an officer. So that's a circumstance where you were a peace officer in California, you were decertified in California, we make the notification, and then each individual state's going to make their own determination about whether or not you would be eligible to be appointed there. That, that's slightly different from if you get decertified in another state, can you come to California? Is agencies, when they go through the hiring and selection process, they're required to inquire from the National Decertification Index. If you've ever been decertified for misconduct, then you're ineligible to be appointed in California. We've delved into the implications of decertification for officers and uncovered the rigors of POST's review process and the finality of a decertification decision. Next, we'll explore how this change in certification impacts the way members of law enforcement interact with POST, bringing to light the day-to-day -day practical effects of this transformative legislation. For additional information and resources related to certification and decertification, including a guide to decertification proceedings and officers' rights to appeal, access the POST website at the link below.